Recap in minutes. In today's video, we will be enjoying a war drama film, entitled Shooting Dogs. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. The movie begins in a school where Joe, an English teacher, is doing commentary on the girls' race. All the students are seen screaming and enjoying themselves. At the end of the race, they pay a tribute to the winner in a traditional way of bowing down. In the next scene a lady Isabel inquires about Joe from her father Christopher. He replies that he is very happy in Africa. She wishes him to tell Joe that they miss him. He turns the request down, stating that Joe is here for one year only. He then goes out where some boys started to follow him, but he scolds them away. Francois takes Joe for a tour around the city. He takes him to his father, who brews banana beer. After greeting, they offer him a drink, and after tasting it he remarks that it is disgusting, as prophesied by Francois, earlier. They have small talk on the way back. An armed person stops them, checks their license of Francois, and allows them to go while few cars have been stopped and checked. Christopher visits his old student, Aaron, from his school and hands him over a bag. He talks to his mother, who gives passion fruit to him. He sees some men taking notes of the place, so he asks about them. She says that they are making a record of the Tootsie people. Joe, on the other hand, calls his mother for small talk, but the call declines midway. A van comes near with the word TV written on the windscreen. Rachel comes out, buys cigarettes and beer from the shop, and talks to Joe. She informs him that the government is shooting Tootsie people, considering them disgusting. He looks astounded by this. She gets called by the driver and leaves. Christopher monitors students, reciting the Christian songs in school. On 6th of April 1994, a usual school day, Joe answers the questions of students after the lesson. They ask him about Jesus' presence. Christopher comes in to provide satisfactory answers to the student. They also talk about Easter and Jesus' death. When Christopher comes out, his face becomes stern to know about the arrival of Counselor Sibomana. After greeting, he asks him about some equipment and the number of persons from the United Nations and then leaves shortly. Charles comes to him to know about the situation. Christopher replies that he was asking about their well-being while being mercifully brief today. In the afternoon, Joe thanked Christopher for helping him in class with the student's question. He looks out of a window, running a young girl, Marie. Christopher comments that she is probably infatuated with Joe. He replies that this is temporary. While she sits to fix the shoelaces, a black boys start propelling stones at her. Joe scolds the boys and asks her if she is fine. He asks about the word Rienzi which the other students called her. She informs him that it means cockroach and all the Tootsie people are called by the same word. Her father, Roland, comes to pick her up. He converses with Joe and they decide to watch the football match together, tonight. While everyone watches the match, Christopher, looking uneasy, goes for a walk. He hears some loud explosions and goes to Charles to inquire about it. The UN armed personnel take their positions. Charles tells them that the president's plane has fallen. They ask if that is a violent seizure by the government or an accident. He replies that this is unknown yet. Christopher recommends Joe talk to his mother, as the future is uncertain. The guns are set and international lines are jammed. Christopher pacifies Joe that they will call his mother tomorrow and he should take a rest. The bombs keep exploding while he lies on the bed. He gets up to the sound of fire and attempts to call his mother. Francois comes and informs Christopher about the presence of people at the school gate. He goes out and orders to open the gates, in order to provide refuge. He talks to Aaron's mother, Ada, who informs him that armed men came with a list of Tootsie people and shot them. Joe orders Aaron to call everyone from school, here. An old couple comes to Joe and starts explaining their situation. He, unable to understand, calls Francois, but the couple has left. When Joe asks about this, Francois reveals that he is a Hutu and that Tutsi people hate them. They want their power back and consider Hutu as their slaves. He leaves the school and goes to his parents. Christopher is told not to take any refugees into the school. The UN armed person says that they just monitor the situation and do not enforce the peace between the two tribes. Christopher replies that he understands their duty, but the natives cannot. On 7th April, the news of violence was reported in the media. Some white people come to the school in big cars and take over the offices to reside. Joe goes to Roland's home to take him and Marie to school. He heads back after not finding them. On the way back, he sees some locals being abused by police. He informs Christopher about the situation and tells him that Roland and Marie are there. He approaches them and offers his room. They politely turn the offer down, saying that they should live with the neighbors in classrooms. 
Charles goes to Christopher and explains that he will give a briefing about the latest situations to Europeans at 6 o'clock and they all might have to evacuate. A minister from the government comes and requests Charles to pass on the details of the situation in New York, as the violence is planned. He repeats that they monitor the peace situation, rather than enforcing the peace. During the briefing, the Europeans are told that they will be sent safely. Marie comes and says to Joe that her father wants to talk. Ronald says to Joe that they have formed three groups for security embassy and food. So, they need steady supplies for their one meal per day. Joe goes to Christopher to discuss the situation. He says that people need to communicate with God in this time and invites Joe to Mass. Joe takes all his belonging out, so that refugees may also use them. On the tenth day of the riots, the counselor comes to meet Christopher. He says that the government is not happy with Tutsis taking refuge in the school. Rwandan must protect Rwandans. He further says that they wish to talk to Belgian guests, so he should talk to Charles about it. Before leaving, he implicitly threatens him about the ten missing Belgian guards, who were protecting the Prime Minister. Christopher goes to Charles and he confirms that ten soldiers are missing. Joe goes to Christopher and shares the opinion of calling a bishop in school. He replies that the UN is targeted and they have lost control. Joe goes out and asks Marie what they are listening to on the radio. She translates that the cockroaches are hiding in school and graves are empty. He turns the radio off and heads to Christopher. He says that Rachel works with the BBC and they can take help from her to broadcast the situation on TV and the world may know about this. He goes to Charles, but he denies it. Christopher also tries to talk but Charles tells that those 10 missing soldiers are found. They were executed by the government. Hence, no one is safe and they cannot go out. Joe takes the truck and leaves to find Francois, as he is a Hutu. Being unable to find him, he goes to Rachel's office. She initially refuses to help but agrees after knowing about the presence of 40 Europeans in school. They are stopped midway by militias and taken out of the truck. A man is executed in front of them and Joe gets quite disturbed. Francois appears with a bloody machete in his hand. He talks to the militias, so they allow them to go forward. On the way, Rachel and the cameraman film the dead bodies lying all around while Joe looks quite unsettled and disrupted. He is sitting alone when Christopher comes to him and says that he has heard about the roadblock. Joe, in a breaking voice, utters that Francois was also there and he has become a killer. Rachel interviews Charles and asks tough questions. He gets angry, stops the camera, and leaves. The extremist Hutus surround the school with weapons. Christopher goes to Charles to discuss the situation. He says that when Nazis attack the Jews, his grandparents saved them and he is proud. Their communication pauses as the loud noise comes. The Tutsis captured an extremist Hutu with a machete. The army person ties him with a tree. Marie says that she is afraid. He pacifies her by saying that as long as they are recorded by Rachel, nothing can happen to them. The extremists sing songs and ridicule the refugees. At night, Rachel comes to Joe and asks why he came here. He replies that he was a privileged kid and wanted to do something for these people. She shares that the previous year in Bosnia, she cried over each dead white woman, but here she feels nothing as they are Africans. She further comments that they are selfish. Power goes out and they light lanterns. Meanwhile, they hear the screams of a woman. When they reach her, she is delivering a baby and Christopher is helping her. They name the child Christopher. He says thank you and leaves. The next morning, Christopher tells Joe that the priests at the church have been killed. He decides to go there, but Joe tries to stop him. The baby's father comes and says that the baby is not well. Christopher goes out to buy medicine and to visit the church, despite being resisted by Joe. The extremist shouted at Christopher's truck and mocked him. He reaches Julius to take medicine. To his surprise, he asks if the patient is a Hutu or Tutsi. He lies and replies that Hutu. On the way back, extremist natives stop him and try to snatch the medicine. They ridicule him but allow him to go. He goes inside the church, covers his nose, and finds Isabella and other nuns dead. Upon arrival at school, Charles says that they will shoot the dogs because they are causing health problems. He reminds him of their mandate of attacking only when they are attacked. Marie tells him that the fuel has finished. They decide to use the Bible. Joe comes and they discuss the situation. Christopher, very distressed, says that nothing like this has happened in his last 30 years here. He ends the conversation by saying that hope has vanished. The baby Christopher's baptism ceremony is taking place when joyful screams are heard. The French army comes to the school. Refugees go forward and try to get on the trucks, but they are pushed out. 
Rachel comes and says that upon the captain's advice, only white people will be taken in the truck with the French army. Joe and Christopher stand there in dismay and watch them leave. Marie asks questions about God Christopher and on the other hand, Joe finds Ada and baby Christopher to give the medicine. They find out that they are running away in the backfields. The UN military runs to stop them, but the extremists attack and kill them. Ada succeeds in hiding behind the bushes and the baby starts crying. They find her and kill the mother and baby. Joe watches this all from the fence. He talks to Christopher about the extreme pain they can bear. He replies that they should pack and leave now. While Christopher sits in the kitchen, Marie comes and asks if he will ever leave them. He replies that he lives in his heart until he dies. She returns. Charles comes to Joe to have a word. Christopher also joins them. Charles states that they are ordered to withdraw to the airport and they are leaving in 30 minutes. Joe, initially reluctant, is convinced by Christopher to leave. The UN army loads all their luggage, and Christopher conducts a communication. The desperate refugees run around the trucks, hoping that they might be protected. Joe sits in the truck and finds Christopher standing among people. He runs towards him and he replies that God is here, he cannot leave. Roland requests Charles to shoot them all or only kids so that they can avoid the pain of machetes. He refuses the requests, scolds him, and goes away. The refugees scream and run around, but the UN army and Joe leave. Roland and Christopher put the kids in the truck to transfer them to a safe place. Christopher drives the children away. Counselor orders the extremists to begin the mass killing. At night, the truck is stopped by Julius. Marie takes the children out and makes them go into the woods. Christopher tries to talk, but Julius shoots him multiple times. Marie watches him dying and runs into the woods. Everyone in school was killed and the dead bodies were lying all around the village. Marie keeps running in the woods. Five years later, Joe is in the school church when Marie comes in. They sit on a bench, under the tree. They talk about Father Christopher and she asks why he left. He replies that he was afraid to die. She remarks that whatever life we are left with, we should spend it in a good way. Tears rolled down his cheeks. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this and help the channel grow.